Hi there. Welcome to VA Consulting Pro and welcome to this another episode of our series DP600 where we are helping you to learn Microsoft Fabric and how you can clear your Microsoft Fabric certification exam. In this video, we are going to talk about relationships in Microsoft Power BI model. That means what is relationship? Why should you use a relationship in a data model? What are the different kinds of relationships in a data model? Also, what kind of text functions you can use while working with these relationships? We will also do a demo lab over there. So if you want to learn more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. If you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, when we are working about the Power BI data model relationships, that means you, if you have different tables inside your data model, then those tables must be related to each other. That means there should be a relationship. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the data from the different kinds of relationships. If you have subscribed to our channel that I have already created videos over data modeling in Microsoft Power BI, where you can learn about the different kinds of relationship, how the relationship or the context of filter travels and how you get the different data out of it. Now, mainly, a relationship is basically going to help you to relate two tables and then you can get the certain data out of it. There are different kinds of relationship such as one to many, many to many, and also it can be many to one or one to one. One to one relationship, whenever you are encountering, then try to merge the table. You don't need to use that relationship. Relationships can be single direction or bidirectional. That totally depends what and how you are using inside your data model. There can be certain tables which ideally don't have any relationships inside your data model. Those tables are known as disconnected table. We do use them for certain cases. For example, in switch condition or whenever we want to filter out certain data or where we want to do some dynamic calculations, etc. Now, if you would like to learn more about these relationships or complete data modeling tutorial, then please find the link in the description section where you can check everything about it. Coming to the second point, what kind of text functions you are going to use inside those relationships or whenever you are either creating a calculated column, et cetera, or certain mesos for your data model, then what kind of DEX functions you can use it? Well, there are mainly a couple of main functions that you're going to use, such as related, related table, use relationship, combine values, treat as, or parent and child DEX functions. Well, I'm not going to teach you everything in this video, otherwise this video is going to be too long. But if you already have experience with Microsoft Power BI data modeling or in general in data modeling, then it won't be a surprise for you. So now I'm going to directly go into the demo part where I'm going to show you how you can work with it. Guys, first of all, this is a lab provided by Microsoft Learn. You can also access the same lab. You don't need any username or password, etc. Everything is going to provide it over there. Basically, it's a virtual machine that you can use it. I'm going to provide you link in the description section for this module where you can learn everything about it. If you have any question, you can directly ask me by commenting in the comment section. So the very first, what you have to do, you have to open the command prompt. So you can type it over here, command prompt, which is over here. So please open this one. And now you have to navigate to D drive. So how you can do that? Basically, you have to write D and D doesn't work like that, probably like this, and we are into the D drive. Now you have to clone one library and how you can do that? Well, basically it's a folder for DP500, which we need to clone. And for that, you need to type one command and which is git clone. And here you can see that git clone over there, which is already there and it has been cloned. Now we have to open the D drive on our desktop and let's see whether it has been cloned or not. So let's go over here. D drive is there, which is DP500 and currently it's empty. Now you can see that in our D drive right now, there is nothing. However, it should be that the file should be over there. So let's try it again. Let me try it over here. No, that's okay. So we are going to type this. Uh huh. Note the password, guys. It should be this command and it's now cloning. So it would take some time. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. 
Once all the files are going to get cloned over here, then we are going to open our starter folder, which we are going to find in the D drive itself. There would be a file named sales analysis, work with model relationships. That's what we are going to open it. Now, let me go back again. And here you can see that I have DP500, all files. And now we have to go to the sixth one here. We have to go of one of the folder over here. And the folder name is starter and this is our file so let's open this one once this file is going to get open you have to save it under my solution in the same drive then we are going to start having look at the data model by the way you even don't need to do this if you already have a microsoft desktop app on your system then you can directly start using this sales analysis report so this is a free sample report by microsoft and you can simply type in google free download sample power bi reports and you can get this report from there now let it get open i believe it has been opened over here we don't need to sign or do anything now you can simply go over here save as save as and you are going to go to d drive but i'm going to go to the solution folder you can either save it into my solution or already the solution because in solution one you would already find it over there now we have saved it so you can close these windows if you would like to and we are going to come under this modeling tab now there are certain things that you should learn over here first of all the properties pane so this is very important when you are doing the data modeling for example show the database in the header you can select it and also you can select it this is gonna just put your all the keys at the top of each table which is very easy to find as you can see that this is following a perfect star schema and i also mentioned that there are different kinds of relationships when you worked with the data model one to one for example this and this although these two can be merged together but let's see we are keeping it separate and there's a bi-directional relationship over here one to many always your data model should consist of fact and dimension tables fact tables are those which contains the numbers and dimension tables are those which contains their descriptions for example if i'll ask you 5 kg of rice then rice is a kind of description of a commodity that would be your dimension where you can keep the products over there 5 kg is a number so that should be your fact so that's how you have always in a fact table you would get the many side but in certain exceptions like over here this is not the right relationship so that's why you have 101 over here so try to avoid 101 in any data model always try to stick with one to many in certain cases you can have many to many but they are going to have the performance impact as well so please very much careful about that also please do remember that inside your exam there can be a question that how many active or how many inactive relationships can be in a data model so between the tables always there's going to be only one active relationship which is with this highlighted row which would be indicated like this solid line however if you will see the dotted lines they can be any number of dotted lines depends on the relationship so at a time only going to be one active relationship however you can use the inactive relationships as well with the help of certain index functions that i told you previously you can use over there related table relationship treat as combined values etc those kinds of different x functions which are going to help you out over there now if we go further then you can also create the different tables over here using this model so you don't need to worry about that at all what we have to do we have to simply add a column to the table visual in data pane and how we can do that well if you already have designed this model try to stick with the star schema in star schema you don't have another table connected to your product table basically so if my sales table is connected to another sales product table or something then it would be star, uh, then it would be a snowflake then it would be a snowflake schema however stick with the star schema where all the different kinds of dimension tables are connected to one fact table it's also possible there is more than one fact table which is which is connecting by using a dimension table as a bridge table over there so that can also be possible now what you can do furthermore after viewing all the relationships etc you can manage these relationships as well for example if i don't need this relationship i can right click over here and i can delete it but i can also go to the properties of this relationship and i can change it if i think that okay there can be another other key i can change it there is a cardinality as well so cardinality is the type of relationship whether you have one to one one to many many to many and this 
So always remember in your exam, this can be the question, what are the different kinds of cardinalities available? Then it can be a question, cross filter direction. So there can be only two, single or both. Now, whether you want to make it active or inactive, this is this one, but also in certain cases, you have to assume referential integrity as well. And this is a kind of option which you would see more and more like in the direct query when you're gonna use the direct query. This model is in the import mode. There is another option over here, uh, manage relationship. With the help of that also you can manage all the relationships and you can do the auto detect as well. So please try to play around because this is gonna help you out in your exam when there would be certain questions on the top of it. Try to minimize two kinds of relationship in your data model. First, you should try not to use many to many. Also, try to restrict relationships which are bidirectional because these have the performance impact on your data model. Now, once you have done with this, you can also try to create a report on the top of that. So what we are gonna do, we are gonna come here. Here we have our different tables and if you will go in date tables, you would find this relationship as well. Uh, not relationship, you would find this hierarchy as well. In my case, what I want to do, I want to have my order year and also my sales amount. So I'm gonna come over here. And here, I'm gonna first find a column name, order year, which is going to be under this sales order. That should be under year. And here's my year. So let me bring it over here. Because it's a fiscal year, that should be with FY. Then, I can use my sales amount and this is this one. Now, you can see that my sales amount and order years are appearing over here. This module is not about teaching you how to create a visualization, etc. But this is about how this relationship is working. So if I'm gonna come back over here, my year is coming from my date table, which is over here. And if you want to check that, what is the relationship? You can double click over there and you say order date key and date key. So that's the relationship between them and relationship is many to one in single direction. What does mean? What does it mean by single direction over here? Single direction simply means that this relationship is traversing or the filter context is traversing in the direction of the arrow. It cannot go back from sales to date, but if you are selecting date, then it can filter out your sales table. That's how this arrow is going towards this sales table. In this table, you see sales order versus sales. You can filter any table with any other table. That means you can either select something in the sales order that is gonna filter your sales table or otherwise, if you can select anything from the sales table that would also filter this table. So that is known as filter propagation. You should always keep in mind because this is gonna be very important concept for you. Please try to remember this and that's gonna help you out. Now, let's suppose you don't want to use this relationship as an active relationship, so you can remove this one. And you're gonna say, hey, I don't want this as my active relationship. Rather than that, now you can come over here and you are gonna say, hey, I would like to use this relationship as my active relationship with this state key rather than the order key. Now you can simply make it as active and this is gonna be your active relationship. That's how you can change the different kinds of relationships over here. In case you want to create any measures, that's also be possible. You can create any measures and you can use a text function over there. Then how you are gonna create these measures? Well, very simple. You are gonna come here. Generally, it's advisable to create the measures from where it's gonna utilize the columns. Or in any other case, let's suppose your columns or number of fields are being used for multiple tables, then from where you are getting the maximum field, try to create in that table only. You can also follow another approach, that is you can create a folder with the name major and where you can place all the majors. But that is not what I would suggest you. Why I suggest you to create a major in the same table itself from where the fields are being used or maximum number of fields are used? The reason is that it's very easy to trace them back if someone else is gonna use them. Now, if you would see, um, let me just change it guys. So I cannot zoom out, I cannot zoom in or zoom out over here, so apologies for that. But what it's doing, it's checking the sales shift and how it's checking, it's calculating some of sales amount, that means your total sales amount, then using the relationship for date, date key and ship date key. If you will check this one, I'm just gonna first select this one, this is gonna create. As I mentioned that you can use certain text functions to traverse between the table 
even there's an inactive relationship that's how this inactive relationship works so if i'm gonna check this currently this relationship is based on my due date key and date key but there's no relationship on ship date key because this is inactive relationship if i'm gonna check this so that's gonna be my inactive relationship and it's saying that there's already a relationship between these two columns so we are not gonna use that one so in that case, it's very important you use certain DEX functions which are going to help you out to calculate those measures. And that's what we did it over here. I hope that is going to be very clear for you. Now, once your measure is created, you can also go back again in the data view. And here you can adjust the number of decimal places over here. So that's up to you. You want to go up to two places, one places or more than that. So I'm just going to use this one. Now, if I have to bring it over here, I can bring it sales shipped and I can bring it over here. And now you can see that you have all the values. There's one where you cannot see this no year and sales amount. Also, remember that all these different values are only coming because there is a relationship between the tables. If I don't have any relationship, let's see what is going to happen. So if I'm going to come here again into my model and then I'm going to delete this relationship from this table then my first part sales amount should not be calculated over there and here you can see that every amount is same because it's just taking your total sales amount over here and there's no relationship that's why it's happening so if you want to filter out the another table with corresponding to the dimension table then you have to have this kinds of relationship that's it guys for this video i'm sure you have learned a lot about power bi model relationships what are those relationships how you can use them and that would definitely going to help you in order to answer the questions in your dp600 exam if you have any question and concern please do let me know in comment in the comment section and if you want any microsoft power bi microsoft fabric training program please do reach out to us also if you are looking for any consulting services or career guidance you can still reach out to us till then keep learning and i'm going to see you in the next video